Hey everybody, I thought I'd give you an update. Well, not really an update, but a review of the Battle Group Overlord book uh, for the Battle Group Rules system. Uh, I got this quite a while ago. This is my favorite book in the series. My favorite period of World War II, actually. But uh, here's a quick look at it. Uh, it's basically in the standard format of all the supplements for Battle Group. You, know, you get your hard cover, your gloss pages, and just look at that. It feels nice. Uh, it's a good book, and I think it's, let's see how many pages we're looking at here, uh, 200, about 240 pages all together. Uh, and in the back you get a couple pull-out sheets that are perforated, uh, one's a battle rate encounters section, which is the same as from the rule book, basically, uh, and a play sheet. I took them out of mine, you don't have to, and you get a play sheet here that you could photocopy instead. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, there you go, your nice illustrations. We're all familiar with that. Uh, lots of pictures and photographs of some really nice miniatures. I believe these are HO scale figures, 20 millimeter figures. Uh, beautiful photographs. Uh, and that's typical in all the battle group books. Anyway, uh, this is basically broken up into two separate books. Uh, the first part covers the actual landings, and that's this section here, so it's a pretty hefty section. Second section, Battles Beyond the Beaches, uh, that's pretty hefty too. So you're looking at uh, two books in one here, really. And basically they follow the same format of the other campaign books, where you got your nice detailed history of the activities of that campaign, in this case the landings, uh, which is excellent reading. Uh, if you're not familiar with the campaign. Here we got an hour by hour listing of what's going on during the landings. Just look at that detail. Great reading in between games or painting. Uh, good stuff. It's a big section. Uh, so there's your history of the landings. Then it goes into the special rules for the game, the battle group system. Uh, things like the duplex drive, disembarking, all the rules for landing craft and things like that. Movement and pinning and uh, everything you need to simulate the actual landings and the battles around those landings. Uh, here we get, Then it goes into the army lists. These rules only make up about maybe three or four pages. Yeah. Uh, then it goes into the army lists. Describes how to use the army lists, uh, the infantry, the tanks, artillery, headquarters units, etc. And that goes into a uh, history of the allied armies. Description of their weapons, their tanks, and so on. Some of the rules details on them are in there. Like uh, two inch and 60 millimeter mortars. It's got a little description uh, what they are. And it goes into their maximum range and how these work in the rules of battle group. Uh, and then it goes into the actual army lists. <clears throat> now again, if you're familiar with Battle Group and the way they handle the army lists, they're typically kind of generic. Uh, they don't often go into the Flames of War uh, format where it's every specific division and company is represented with a separate, distinct army list. Uh, this is more generic, but... In this case, it says it's the 6th Airborne Division, British, uh, and they're using that as the basis for this particular British Airborne Army list. Uh, but you can use this for just about any air division used by Britain uh, during the campaign as well, and I think it talks about that. Uh, one of the reasons for that is because if you look at these lists, you'll see that they're very, there is a lot of options in these lists. So you can, you can represent all kinds of things here. A three-tank platoon, a single tank, two tanks, a full five-tank platoon, things like that you can put in this game. As well as things like medics and uh, wire teams and all that good stuff. So there's the British Airborne one. Quite extensive. And then a little history on the 6th Airborne Division. It goes into the British Amphibious Assault Group. And again, kind of generic. Uh, and this is representative of all the... British amphibious assault groups that took place in the landings, so you could pull from this. Uh, you can represent any unit that was represented there, or in the actual landings. There's a history of the 3rd Infantry Division. It goes into the Americans, that's the 3rd Army list. 
There's their airborne division. I believe that's molded after the 82nd. <clears throat> their actual list, the history of the 82nd. Uh, then it goes into the American Amphibious Assault Battle Group. <clears throat> and there's the list of all the weapons, etc. And then we get into the Germans during the landings. There's their history, again, like we did for the Allies. Uh, it's a description of the weapons, the tanks. Anything that applies to the actual battle group rules is in there. Uh, and then it's going to jump right into the army lists. In this case, we've got this one here called the Atlantic Wall Resistance Nest. And it's pretty obvious what that represents. That's all your divisions that were uh, holding position on the beaches. And you need all kinds of goodies in that army list to represent the various divisions and formations. Uh, there's a sample. Uh, then we've got the 21st Panzer Division represented here. Again, representative of all, most of the Panzer Divisions that took place there. Uh, but specifically, this is molded after the 21st. Uh, and goes into some history on the 21st Panzer Division. Uh, and that's the Army List. I think that was about six. Then we got Battles for the Beaches, section on special rules and scenarios. Uh, there's all the special rules for landing, actually running your landing craft off the beach, on to, from the shore to the beach, and so on. Uh, some very specific scenarios, such as Bloody Omaha, uh, which simulate the landings at Omaha. There's the forces, little history, special rules, everything you'd expect from a historical type scenario. Very good, very well done. Uh, another scenario, and another scenario. So there's about four of those scenarios there, and that concludes the first half of the book. Now we get into the good part that I like so much, which is Beyond the Beaches. Again, it opens up in similar fashion. You get your photographs, goes right into the history. All the th describes what happened in the U.S. sector, the British sector, and so on during each month of the post landings. Uh, very good reading. Uh, if you don't know anything about Normandy, this is good primer for you. Uh, then it goes into special rules. Uh, especially terrain, uh, how to represent it, uh, bocage, and so on. Specific terrain for con, and so on. It's better simulated on your table. And then it goes into the weapons and stuff that was encountered there. And again, special rules. And then it jumps into the scenarios for post-Normandy landings. This scenario here is a generic scenario, recce screen. So you can add this to your four standard scenarios that you get in the rule book, which is nice. Looks good. Uh, then you got some specific scenarios right here. Some historical scenarios. Here's one that represents the Polish attack. Uh, here we got the closing of the Fillets Gap. Uh, forces involved and so on. And then it goes right into the army lists uh, starting with the Allies. And again, the British. Here's their Armored Division Battle Group. And that represents the various Armored Divisions that took place post-Normandy. You can see it's organized the same way. you got your Recon Units, Engineer Units, and so on. And then it goes into the British Infantry Division Battle Group. Again, same thing. It's a colored pictures. Then we get into the Americans, and I believe they have two lists as well. One being an Armored Division. And the second being an infantry division, I believe. Yeah, American Infantry Division. And there's the structure of the list, as you can see. All that good stuff. Uh, and then I think it goes into the Germans. And it covers their army lists. Uh, German Panzer Division. There are various Panzer Divisions, everything they can have. And I believe it goes into a uh, Felschenjäger battle group. If you want to represent the various formations of Felschenjägers, there they are. Lots of nice pictures. And, yeah, these are great pictures if you want to know how to paint your models. I mean, there's a lot of good examples of camouflage and weapon colors, canteens and so on. It's a great resource for that, too. Uh, the book doesn't have a modeling section, but... Basically, with all these colored pictures, you're, you're getting a, a perfect example. Uh, Neville Werfers. 
Oh, there's another one. German Infantry Division Battle Group. Luftwaffe Field Division. All right, you get an army list for that as well. So I guess the Germans have three, or is it four? No, well, it's at least three. <clears throat> and it goes into the appendix, which is typical of all the campaign books. And this is where you got, uh, besides the organization chart, which is where you record your units that you take. Uh, this is where you have the stats for all the tanks, the guns, and uh, how many guys can ride on, a, ride on a half track. That information is all here in the back. So you know where to pull your information from when you actually sit down to play a game. It's got the Germans at the end. <clears throat> so that's Battlegroup Overlord in a nutshell. Pretty good. It's very worth the money that you pay for this. Excellent resource, whether you play battle group rules or not. If you play Flames of War or Blitzkrieg Commander, uh, these rules are a great supplement for those uh, rule systems as well. Uh, and of course, if you play battle group, grab this book. It's perfect for if you want to get into Normandy or late war, post-Normandy battles, grab this book. Uh, another thing to take note is that if you like the Fall of the Reich book, which is another supplement, which I'll cover later, uh, for the battle group system, you can use the army lists in this book in Fall of the Reich. So that's useful, multi-useful here. So there it is, folks. That's Battle Group Overlord.